All right, the purpose of this tutorial is to show how to convert DXF data to Gerber. Now, one of the main problems that most uh, AutoCAD designers or DXF uh, format has is that it pretty much does not support fill. DXF in general is just made of lines, arcs, polyline, or polygon, pardon me, polylines with zero width. Uh, another thing such of that nature. However, we do, if we're going to convert this to a Gerber mask, you can't just use zero width uh, entities. You've got to have some type of width associated so you can make your mask. So what I've done here is here's an AutoCAD representation of the DXF file. And here's the customer sending what they would like the DXF to look like as far as fills are, as far as the fills are needed. So you'll see that the final result looks nothing like the actual AutoCAD drawing itself. You'll see in the AutoCAD drawing, it's just made with a bunch of separate little uh, lines and arc segments and they're unconnected. So the first rule to understand is whenever you're converting a DXF file to Gerber, Gerber requires that every boundary is not individual segments but is joined together as one solid group or entity. Uh, for best results it's always good to use polylines with zero width so you can use a command like pedit uh, select one of the commands here, say yes, and then you can use the join command, and you can select all the objects that should be joined to there. And you'll see right down here it says 7 were entered. Hit enter now when I select this, look at that, it's all connected, which is what Gerber requires. However, that's a lot of work if you've got all these particular uh, shapes and if you've also received this DXF file from another tool like SolidWorks or something else of that nature it's just too much effort to have to go and join everything so fortunately we're going to show you with ACE Translator how to automatically join all your circuits and how to uh, from there create all the fills and de-embed masks if necessary. Alright the one thing I will notice though is that if you look back on the original customer requirement they had an outline sorry and on this outline, let's just drag it. Let me zoom out a little bit here. You see right here, there's a, a pretty much a bordered edge going around the, the pattern here. It's a bit hard to see with this coloring. But in any case, what we will have to do is we want to fill all these other boundaries, but we do not want to fill the outer edge. That can remain either as a, uh, uh, you know, just line segments, because then what's going to happen is during the conversion, a default width will be assigned to all the lines and traces and everything else in nature because again in Gerber you cannot have a zero width entity. What is best done is to put the border on a separate layer and then we'll perform the conversion. So what we'll do here is I'll just create a brand new layer and I'll just call that layer outline. Choose a color, any color will do. Okay, and then I'll use the command change properties. And again, this is just one step that I like to do. There are other workarounds, uh, but if you're going to start from scratch, this is the best way to, to do it. Let me see. Make sure. And then it is. A Uh, an AutoCAD does sometimes not show the uh, the color. It's just one of the, the quirks about it. But if I type list, you'll see that it is on layer outline. So I was going to change the properties. But in any case, now I'll create my DXF file. And we'll call this one traces new. Save. All right, now I'm going to start up ACE 3000, which will perform the DXF to Gerber conversion. One thing you'll notice is DXF does not have any units associated with it. So you have to be careful or understand what units are my is my design in. Just by moving the mouse across here, I can obviously see the units by looking in the lower left corner are not in inches, but it appears to be millimeters. So I'll go ahead and start up ACE. I'll select millimeters for my units. And you see there's a wide variety of other units you can choose. The export format will be Gerber. So I'll just select next. Here's my DXF that I just created. Believe our star. It's right here. The trace is new, is what I just created. 
All right, and here's the most important part of the conversion, is this section right here. Layer 0 had all those lines and arcs that were unconnected, so I want to select the Join option. What that's going to do is that's going to automatically perform that P-Edit feature that I showed earlier to everything on that layer. Uh, and also, I like to use the D-Embed feature. What the D-Embed feature does is it automatically recognizes if you happen to have uh, polygons inside of other polygons or fills inside of other fills, like say, for instance, the letter O, the outer circle is dark, and if there's an inner object completely inside the the outer polygon then is cleared out so you end up with like the letter O if you have two concentric circles. Uh, the flash command means that if it recognizes any circles to create Gerber flashes which is excellent because it saves data and gives you better results. On the outline I don't want to have fill because I really don't care about having fill uh, because I just want the out outline for the border here and the flashes really doesn't make a difference but you can uncheck it. And We'll sit here, just all the basic uh, settings that I've set, pretty much they're all standard. Uh, had you had hatches, you can include all hatches or anything else of that nature. It doesn't really matter here. So I'll go ahead and select Next. Here's the where you can verify what you want for the Gerber exporting. So I'll just use metric uh, dimensions 3, 4, which means it's accurate to four, place, four places. Uh, and that would be in millimeters for the metric. So pretty accurate right there. Click Next. At this point, ACE is importing in the DXF file. It's also performing join to join those boundaries and it's also, if necessary, performing the de-embed feature. Okay, great. So now we're done. Let's go ahead and view it first before we actually write the Gerber files. And now since I've got the addition, now since I have everything set up pretty much the way that I like, let me go ahead and just change everything back to the original layer. So you can just right click and then go to the edit menu, layers, or let's see, properties, sorry. Go to properties and select zero. What this does is it just moves everything to layer zero. So now I have use up what I did is in early in the conversion, I placed the border layer on a separate layer just so it wouldn't fill and or join. And then now what I'm going to do is now that everything looks good. I'm ready now to export out to Gerber. So I go back to conversion setup. And here I can select whether I want negative mirror or anything else in nature. We don't even need this layer anymore. And so we're just interested in this layer. Let's rename it to something more useful. And hit next. And from here you simply select the folder where you want your Gerber to appear. And that's it. And if you need any further assistance, uh, please feel free to visit numericalinnovations.com and download our free trial of ACE 3000. Thank you.